morning and welcome to the cabinet of breakfast show with me patrick soko and my usual co-host shalom kalimbula and together we'll be with you up to the hour of nine and uh, today as usual we have a fully packed program where we'll be discussing various issues and also pertaining to land and the environment you too our dear viewers can add your perspective on this uh, uh, subject that we'll be tackling as well as stories that will be zooming in you can give us your perspective Sure. Indeed, a very good morning to you, our viewers. Stay tuned for more interesting and an interactive session. We will be with you definitely up until the hour of nine. Of course, we will be zooming into the stories like Patrick has mentioned, and one of them that has taken center stage and circulating on social media is about the social event that was held over the weekend. Various stakeholders have actually brought out what our laws state insofar as this is concerned. So we will be delving into one of the stories that we carried yesterday day insofar as that topic is concerned then you too can have your say on that yes of course we are not focusing our attention on that this morning but you can still have your say however we are talking about issues to do with land for now though let's look at the health corner and see what the doctors have for us this morning Good morning and welcome to your breakfast show and in particular the health segment. I'm Dr. Chelo Mwanza, a member of the Medical Women Association of Zambia and this health segment is proudly brought to you by the Medical Women Association of Zambia. So this week we are looking at the importance of under five clinics. We are looking at the various components and how these components actually help us in monitoring a child's growth. And so yesterday, we outlined the components. We looked at our baby and parent information. And today, we're going to look at um, growth monitoring. So from conception, an embryo is expected to grow and develop until a time when the baby is born, after which uh, the growth of this child is followed up and monitored at the under five clinic visits. And so growth can be measured in three ways. And um, this is monitoring the weight, the height, and the brain development. If a child is not developing well in any of these three components, it means there's a problem and um, you may need to see a doctor for that uh, particular problem that your child could have. So um, how do we monitor uh, growth in terms of weight? So as you take your child for the under five visits, you will probably be given this record and um, we have it out there in our clinics and so in particular each time every month you take your child for the visit the weight will be plotted on this particular chart so a child who's gaining adequate weight would expect them to be along this green line so if your child is gaining weight as it is required they will be between this green line and the top red line so if your child starts to lose weight the scale will start going down and this is a danger sign it could mean that your child is not gaining adequate weight or they are actually losing weight it could be because they are not feeding as they're supposed to or maybe they've had an illness um that's long-standing or maybe it's just a short illness that uh could have made them lose weight. If the child continues to lose weight, even to get to this dotted line, your child at this particular point could be in severe acute malnutrition and may need admission for treatment. Again, on the other hand, if your child gains excessive weight such that they go above this black line on top, it means your child is, has gained too much weight and would, we may need uh, to check could it be um, something wrong why, why they could be gaining so much weight or it could be just that maybe you are not giving the food as it is supposed to so this is one way we monitor a child's growth the other way we monitor the growth is to look at um, the height of the child so again 
each time you go for the under five visit, we expect that your child's height will be measured and it will be plotted again on this chart. So if your child is within between the red the two red lines or along the green line, it means your child is gaining the height as they are supposed to. If your child um, is not gaining as much height as they're supposed to, let's say they are between this red line at the bottom and the black line, it could mean that your child um, could be short for their height because of a particular problem. It could also be feeding problems or it could just be that it is runs in the family. Some children could be short from the beginning, but they do catch up later, especially around puberty. Again, if your child um, is gaining so much weight that ab above this red line, which is above the green line, it could be that your child is too tall for their age. Again, some people, some children are tall because generally in the family they are tall or others it could be because maybe they have excess hormones or they have another problem and so by monitoring by us plotting all this on this chart it helps us to see how well your child is growing now we've, now that we've looked at the height and the weight the other aspect that we monitor even as a child develops is the brain function so for for the body to function as it is supposed to the brain is supposed to have the correct size and be functioning the right way and so as your child is growing the certain things that we expect them to do at a particular age so as you take them for under five visits we're going to measure the head circumference so that um, we measure we put it around the head we measure how well how big the head is uh, ideally of course when a baby is born the head is smaller but as they grow on the head also starts to grow and at every particular age we expect that the head circumference is um, at the correct size so after we've measured that we're going also to look at what your child is able to do so if uh, you can see I mean, I, I know most of us parents out there have these under five cards. It's easy. You can follow, you know, you can see that in this first line, this is a child who's between two and four months. So we expect that a, two, a child between two and four months is able to lift their head. They're able to support their head. And also they're able to smile even as you talk to them, you know, as you smile at them, they smile back at you. Babies sometimes do smile from birth for whatever reason. They smile during their sleep. They smile even, uh, even when you haven't smiled at them. But the most important thing is that at about six weeks, we expect that when you smile at your child, uh, they smile back at you. And for us, that's a sign of growth. That's a sign of communicating, of communication between you and the child or the child to you. So and so again, at about four months to six months, we expect that your child starts to babble, you know, they start making sounds um, and then also they're able to take objects to their mouths. And this is around the time when, you know, sometimes you might see teeth development and um, yeah, and sometimes they tend to have diarrhea because of um, frequent, uh, frequently taking things into their mouth. And so if for instance you gave a child who's two months old a toy they may not be able to play with it because they are too young to play with a toy but you get if you get that toy to a child who's between four to six months you'd expect that they'll be able to play with it you know they'll hold it they'll take it to their mouth to their mouth for us it's a sign of growth it means the brain is developing as it is supposed to and so we go on if we look at a child who's between six to nine months uh, they start to learn how to sit, uh, they're able to say mama, tata, you know, so it means they're growing and growing and so on and so forth. When you look at a child who's between 9 to 12 months, they start to learn how to walk, they start to pick up objects, they point at things. And they're even able to imitate gestures so you know they can say bye when you when you wave at them and they wave back at you and so forth and so on so as you bring as you take your child for these under five visits we are able to help you 
stimulate your child with the appropriate type of play and even the toys to give so that this child's brain can develop as it is supposed to. So today we've looked at three aspects which help us um, tell that this child is growing very well. So we looked at how, we, how the weight is measured and plotted and the height and also the brain development. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Chelo Mwanza from the Medical Women Association of Zambia. Tomorrow we are going to look at nutrition and how well we need to feed our babies so that they can gain the adequate weight. See you tomorrow. Thank you. watching the comment of breakfast and that was our first segment we called the health corner and uh, that was dr mwanza explaining the importance of under five uh, clinic and mm -hmm. uh, this is where we take our children to ensure that uh, they are checked quite a number of uh, issues shadow and uh, if you see uh, in compounds, they 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 don't really? happen those things really <laughs> but that's how it's supposed to be that's how it's supposed to be but usually people uh, children are taken for under five clinic just to to have their weight checked you know if a toy it has increased or decreased, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, Moana, Simon, just a bueno. And so, these people, it's like they've gone to a school of rudeness. Eh? But, but what does that amount <laughs> to negligence? Or yes, it does. It does. Or... It does amount mm -hmm. to negligence. Because really, why, why aren't you paying attention to your job? Mm -hmm. Your job in the first place is to ensure that the health of a child is okay. Yeah. And that's why you take them for under five. They yes. fall under, uh, one thousand. is it 1,000 days? 100, 100, uh, is it 1,000 1, days? days yeah. yeah, of course. You know, especially in that mm -hmm. period, you need to know and understand their growth. But then, sometimes even the cleaners, they're the ones that put your child on that scale. They weigh your child, 13.5, but last month, they said 145 14.5. Imwamai, mwana simu mjesa buino. Nangai, wani kejia inda koti? Ah, <laughs> you know, in Japan. In Japan. you know, it's like they've gone to the school of rudeness, like I mentioned earlier. Like, that was a rough, brutal. But man, this is my child in the first place. Her safety or his safety is my concern. Her healthy mm -hmm. is my concern. So really, if I tell there's something wrong, I need to be advised. Probably, sometimes kids lose weight mm -hmm. without any sickness or anything. You know, they just lose weight. Sometimes maybe their scale may even malfunction. <laughs> it is not giving the accurate uh, figures. Before I call you Dr. Eh? Sharon, can you please tell us how the coaches report? <laughs> anyway, it is a personal issue. <laughs> These people have gone to the school of rudeness. <laughs> of course, let's look at how the coacher is faring against the major convertibles. It's been uh, doing very good of late. Mm -hmm. And um, the Fimba Upoke clan has gone on rampage on social media saying Fimba Upoke. The Jola, <laughs> the Kwacha is doing fine. fire, Let's look at how the Kwacha is faring. <laughs> All right. The Great British Pound is at 17 Kwacha 66 in way and selling at 18 Kwacha. The United States Dollars is at 15 Kwacha 31 way and selling at 15 Kwacha 61 way. The Euro is at 15 Kwacha 14 way and selling at 15 Kwacha 44 way. While the South African Rand is at 0 0.89 way and selling at 0 0.9 way. Those are your money markets as of today. Of course, as usual, these money markets vary from one financial institution to another. So somewhere else it may trade a little higher or less than what we have projected on the screens however you should know that it is trading within this range obviously of course yeah in okay so insofar as um, the prices of uh, commodities are concerned and uh, uh, the, the 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 appreciation of the quacha mm -hmm. the reflective prices 
it has started actually reflecting in some of the prices, goods and commodities, however term you would want to use. Mm -hmm. So, Patrick Soka, yesterday you went uh, to one of the chain stores to just see around how the prices have been. And uh, let's just let me just read the story. Chain stores have begun reducing prices of the commodities in response to the performance of the quacha and the reduction of inflation to a single digit. A check at one of the chain stores found the prices of goods reduced by 7 to 12 percent. Some consumers interviewed by Cabinet Business News are happy that the gesture will help to enhance their buying power. Meanwhile, Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Tabo Kawana has told Cabinet News that government will continue to stabilize the economy to benefit both consumers and business communities. Mr. Kawana says it is important that businesses respond to what he referred to as a conducive business environment by passing on the benefits to the citizens. Let's look at the story. Then you too can also comment if indeed you have uh, the buying power as some of the customers or the consumers uh, spoken to responded to. Meantime, Fimba Upoke. They say what goes up must come down, but when it comes to prices of commodities, it has not been the case as commodity prices have been on an upward trajectory beyond the reach of many Zambians. But this narrative is being rewritten as Zambians are becoming more aware of their consumer rights. Notably, the Zambian Kwacha experienced stability in terms of exchange rate against the United States dollar and other major convertible currencies, thus slowly pushing the prices of goods and services downwards. The Kwacha appreciated on account of continued interventions by the central bank, by the Bank of Zambia, and the positive market sentiments regarding national debt relief structuring. ShopRite is one of the chain stores operating in Zambia, which assured to engage suppliers to reduce prices of commodities to pass on the benefits to consumers. And 9th September 2022, the chain store reduced prices on some commodities between 7 to 12 percent. For instance, a 5-liter cooking oil has been reduced from 289 kwacha to 229 kwacha. Sugar has been reduced from 49 kwacha 99 ngwe to 39 kwacha 99 ngwe, while a 25 kilogram bag of breakfast millimeal has been reduced from 156 kwacha 99 ngwe to 136 kwacha 99 ngwe, among other commodities. This has excited consumers who are hoping that prices of commodities will continue to fall in order to increase their buying power. Uh, my way to government is that uh, let it continue. Um, uh, growing stronger because uh, the people have uh, a lot of money to buy a lot of all, all the things that they want. Yes. It'll be very good for everyone. Um, it's taken a while for prices to come down, and I'm also hoping there's a lot more Zambian products for the marketplace yes, like shop prices. Because we import too much, and we have a lot of products like these ones ourselves, vegetables, etc. So I'm hoping it makes a difference to everyone. ShopRite chain store's general manager, Charles Botta, says prices will continue to fall as they persist on engaging the suppliers. So we called the 11 suppliers and said, you've benefited. Give us reduction in pricing depending on what it is that you're getting. Fortunately, none of them said no because the facts are there, the economics are there to prove it. And uh, we received items now, at the time that we first started was about 800, now we have about 1,200 lines that we reduced. And we reduced anything from 7.5% in terms of reduction of received from suppliers to 12.5%. We are still talking because obviously the economy is continue, continues to change. So that's, that's the reason. And Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Tawa Kawana says the government will continue to work on economic fundamentals for businesses to thrive while safeguarding the plight of consumers. Uh, you have seen that we have had a reduction in fuel back-to-back -back price. So this results in uh, lowering the cost of doing business. And the business community is beginning to respond. The market always responds to what government is doing. So because government is implementing good policies, the market is responding by passing on uh, uh, lower prices to the consumers out there. At the end of the day, the people are benefiting. Government will not involve itself in uh, 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 price setting or as it were in the past where the government was the one to determine 
what prices to be put on goods. Government will not involve itself in that. But government will continue to work hard and also continue to ask the private sector to respond and pass on the benefits to the people. I think you have seen mini meals coming down, you've seen sugar is coming down, you've seen even beef is coming down. Patrick Soko, Camnet News in Nusaka. There you have it. Uh, that's a quite an interesting story that we were following up because uh, remember, Shalon, uh, mm -hmm. before uh, that, uh, uh, the chain store had indicated that it was going to gain surprise to pass on the benefit to mm -hmm. consumers. And uh, when we, we heard the word of uh, it uh, that say they are we actualizing that concept, mm -hmm. we wanted to just go on the ground and verify. You know, exactly. sometimes these things, uh, people may just be saying things, but, uh, but on the ground it's something else. And we had to verify on, on that. And we also called upon the uh, Mr. Kawano, who has been also talking about the same issue to mm -hmm. give us his perspective. And uh, we are happy that uh, the chance to was, uh, was responsive and uh, engaged us. Uh, to in that conversation however we just hope that uh, everywhere across the board others are also doing the same mm -hmm. because like i like i said in that story when prices in zambia go up they don't come down no. but uh, in other this ways this is unprecedented yeah, so but uh, we say what goes up must come down but, uh, but 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 when it comes to prices it has been something else so especially with cooking yeah it, it continues to escalate a, a prudence that mm -hmm. once uh, complained um Relentlessly, relentlessly over buying cooking oil at a certain That's amount when she thought it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was getting too when expensive when she thought it was a certain amount then she went there and just realized that yeah. she had to remove some of the things that she had bought to, to just accommodate to buying the, uh, the cooking, cooking oil. oil yeah <laughs> that's how delicate it is i think for me we'll make we'll, uh, i'm going to say that we have made progress when um we completely do away with the bodies uh, because um, at, <laughs> what, in, what are the in, in compounds, <laughs> people still use the the bodies, the, 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 sach, <laughs> the sachet. Those, this morning's uh, breakfast show has a lot of terminologies. There's fimbao poke, there's the bodies. What else is there now? <laughs> quite, you, a number. quite a number. The other <laughs> five also brought in their own things, like they've graduated from the school of of, of rudeness. Of rudeness. <laughs> God, interesting. <laughs> and you, you yourself, you were just interacting with the the midwife Wifley mm -hmm. uh, Association of Zambia. Mm -hmm. So now, and uh, so you were just pretending exactly. and, and not asking them to like, say why most of your members uh, well, like, seem too too but, rude. But, but, <laughs> but to some extent, Patrick, I did understand owing to the fact that. Um, uh, Minister of uh, Ministry of um, Health, mm -hmm. Permanent Secretary Dr. Lakson Kasonka clearly mentioned to say, as it stands currently in Zambia, it's uh, one midwife per one thousand uh, people. Mm -hmm. So that number is too huge. So they are overwhelmed. They are overwhelmed, and the more reason why, to some extent, I do understand that they they give cleaners to help them just kuweing mm -hmm. But it sh it shouldn't be the case. While while I mm -hmm. do understand where they are coming from. It shouldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. So we have a long way to go, Patrick. And um, issues to do with children, really, you know, they're very hearty for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we surely hope that as we move forward, we will get, we'll start getting mm -hmm. proper statistics. Of course, they have improved from 790 something deaths per 1,000 per 100,000 live births to 200 and something. So yeah, which so is we are making progress towards statistics. addressing maternal mm -hmm. mortality exactly. as well as uh, infant mortality. And uh, now talking about the topical issue in the country, mm -hmm. where you, uh, dear viewers, you will be also giving us your perspective on, is the story where the former Minister of uh, uh, National Guidance and Religious Affairs, uh, Godfrida Sumairi, has described the happenings at a recently held social event known as Lusaka July as embarrassing, stating that it was characterized by nudity, nudity and cross-dressing. In an interview, Levan Sumaili has called for the implementation of existing laws to bring the law in order and order in the country, stating that Zambia's Christian nation status is clearly stipulated in the Republican Constitution. Meanwhile, in a separate interview, the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia EFZ Executive Director Bishop Andrew Mwenda has aged the, the Zambia police to urgently act on the matter. Meanwhile, the Council of Churches in Zambia, CCZ, says activities that violate the morals of the country must not be entertained. CCZ General Secretary Father Emmanuel Chikoye says recent happenings at the Lusaka July Festival that had attracted social media attention must be condemned in the strongest terms possible. Father Chikoye says the future of the country largely depends on the values imparted 
on the youths who are believed to be the future generation. He has since called on government and members of the public to uphold the values of the nation. Let's look at these two stories. Thereafter, you can have your comment on this conversation. Good morning. 1991 always remain a memorable year for Zambia, as it is the year in which then Republican President Frederick Tuluba declared it as a Christian nation, meaning that the country is guided by Christian morals. I likewise submit the government and the entire nation of Zambia to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. I further declare that Zambia is a Christian nation. It is in line with the same that indecent exposure and issues pertaining to same-sex relationships are prohibited under the laws of Zambia. Happenings at a recently held social event known as the Lusaka July, which aims at blending the sport of polo and fashion, has caused a lot of talk in the country, with some expressing concern over how men wore female garments and makeup. Others have expressed concern over what they term as high levels of indecent exposure that was exhibited through some costumes, stating that this is corrupting the country's morals. In an interview, Former Minister of National Guidance and Religious Affairs under the Patriotic Front, Gottfrieda Sumaili, has warned that unless implementation of existing laws is applied aggressively, the country's Christian status may be compromised. And the first value that is stated is morality and ethics. This is very, very embarrassing. It is shameful and is totally unacceptable to us as a people. And I'm just wondering, where is our government? Where is our government when these things are happening? Uh, we know we are a nation of laws. The rule of law should prevail in our nation. We have the laws, but why are we not implementing those laws. In a separate interview, the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia EFZ, through its executive director, Bishop Andrew Mwenda, says the onus is on the police to act on the happenings. The police must have known what was going on. They should have walked in and gone in there and closed it or just stopped it. We need to stop this. However, even as a church, we don't want to be reacting to this thing every now and then because we believe that we are a nation of laws. The laws of this country do not permit that kind of a thing to take place. No one is permitted to walk in nudity like that in this country. So let's begin to think about it. But if you ask about what's the thoughts of the church, the church says this thing must be banned unless there's a change in the way the organizers will have to Organize it. They have stated that safeguarding the country's morals is paramount to keeping the society away from moral decay. Zipora Mshala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Comes in view of the recent happenings in the country, particularly the July festival that has attracted social media attention and cross examinations of different stakeholders in the country because of the Anzambian acts that were portrayed at the event. The future of this country largely depends on the values we impart on the youths who are believed to be the future generation. These values are essential in whatever stage of life we are in and most adults have the values that were instilled during childhood and these form fundamentals in one's life. The nation must understand that moral values give room for decisions in life and without these uh, values, children's lives may be directionless. Our call as CCZ is that parents and caregivers should imbibe strong moral values in children that will give them good mor moral, st moral standing in the society. The council believes the church has a huge responsibility to provide moral knowledge to our children and the community at large. coverage of any breaking or latest news in Zambia and around the world on Kamnet Television, call the numbers on your screen. Kamnet Television, bringing to your screens fair news, impartial news, 
credible and reliable news all the time. Get the whole truth on Camnet World News. television not just another channel Welcome back. You're still watching Cabinet Breakfast. So those are some of the stories that keep making headlines, especially this week. Of course, it has been running on social media. Different people, different stakeholders bringing out all those laws, all those regulations, all those statements, all those values and norms that are supposed to be regarded as normal and abnormal. And therefore, it would be nice if we also got your perspective, not glorifying uh, the wrongs, but... Uh, we just want to understand your perspective. I think one of them actually was dressed like a woman, uh, a man rather, actually posted on social media to say, even us who you are calling bend or round or whatever, not straight, we actually voted for this administration. So what does that mean for these people? This is a topical issue that has always come up, like Bishop Mwenda there had mentioned, to say we can't keep talking about the same things over and above. The laws are very clear in this country and such festivities, like according to Father Chikoya, should not be allowed where we exhibit high levels of immorality in that order. And therefore, it would be nice if at all we had your comment as well, wherever you are watching us from. Of course, our main interview is about land, but we cannot go without talking about issues that may affect you and I in the near future. However, let's look at one of the stories that we aired last night. A family, the family of the former grade 8 pupil, Frank Mogala, who was shot dead by the police in 2020 during the gassing incident, has sued the state before the Lusaka High Court, demanding a refund of funeral expenses to a tune of 170,000 kwacha, among other claims. According to a statement of claim filed before the court, Lloyd Mugala, who he has sued in his capacity as administrator of Frank's estate, also wants the court to order the Attorney General and the Inspector General of Police arrest and prosecute those who are involved in the murder of the deceased. On the 30th of February 2020, a 13-year-old Frank Mugala was shot by officers when residents ran amok in protest against gassing incidents which rocked the country. Miriam Kaimba was at the court as usual and brought us this report. Let's look at it. Close to three years since 13-year-old Frank Mugala, a former grade 8 pupil at Chazanga Primary School, was shot dead by a police officer. His family has now rushed to the Lusaka High Court where they have sued government demanding a refund of funeral expense in the sum of 170,000 kwacha. In 2020, the 13th of February, the deceased was killed during the Zambia Police Service operation by a bullet when the police were trying to dispense residents who were protesting after a rumor went round that individuals suspected of being involved in ritual killings through gassing and suspecting victims with paralyzing chemicals were hiding at the school. After his death, several stakeholders called for justice to prevail and those responsible for his death be brought to book. This led to an inquest being opened and it was later established by Lusaka Magistrate Stanford Ngobala, who sat as coroner in his verdict that a trigger happy police officers whose identities were concealed by the investigation officer caused the death of 13 year old Frank Mugala and ordered that a copy of his verdict be handed to Lusaka Province Commissioner of Police, Lakson Sakala, for further actions against the culprits. However, according to a statement of claim filed by the family before court, the state that despite the court giving its verdict, no step has been taken to either discipline or arrest and prosecute the perpetrators for the murder of their relative. Lloyd Mugala, who is suing in his capacity as administrator of the estate, has cited the Attorney General, Inspector General of Police, Officer in Charge at Emmersdale Police Station, Kapila, and Emmersdale Police Station Inspector Mubita Mubita, has respondent in the case respectively. Mr. Lloyd Mugala has submitted that Officer in Charge at Emmersdale Police Station 
Kapila and Emmersdale Police Station Inspector Mwita Mwita were involved in the shooting of Frank Mugala, and no action has been taken against them despite the court finding. The family, among other claims, wants the court to order the Attorney General and the Inspector General of Police order for the arrest and prosecution of the officers who murdered the deceased. Miriam Kaipa, reporting for Kamne TV News. The Bombay drainage in Lusaka is one of the major storm drains that was constructed to partly solve the problem of overflooding in the country's capital during the rain season. The drainage tends to overflow during heavy rainfall, posing a danger of drowning for those who may find themselves near this place at such a time. Active construction of boarding houses is however taking place a few meters from the drainage between Church Road and Parienyatwa Roads in Lusaka, a situation which caught the attention of concerned citizens who are late at Camnet News. A check inside the premises also revealed that some property owners have begun expanding the property close to the drainage. While caretakers found at the site claim that the land is owned by a man only identified as Mr. Mohammed, whom the claim has title, the Lusaka City Council, through the Department of City Planning, has promised to investigate the happenings. Meanwhile, Zambia Land Alliance Executive Director Patrick Musole says the land governance system in Zambia is weak, which means that there is no well-established mechanism in place to monitor land illegalities. I think it will help everyone if they are, are proactive rather than being reactive as the case has been. So I would like to urge the councils to be proactive. We also want to strengthen um, land governance uh, guidelines so that we strengthen punishment for people who do those things. Demolishing is one, one thing and we things that are clearly are done with impunity should be demolished. We can defend our illegalities. But we need to uh, strengthen the overall land governance uh, system to prevent such illegalities because they have an impact on so many things. They have an impact on water and sanitation uh, when people build over, uh, over water and sewerage infrastructure. We have an impact on electrical, electrical power infrastructure when people build under power, but also they compromise people's safety. Land has remained a highly controversial issue in Zambia necessitating agent reforms. Ziporam Shala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. Welcome back. You are still watching the Kamnet Breakfast Show and uh, just now we are ready for our first uh, interview and our guest uh, in the studio is uh, an environmentalist as well as a former Minister of Environment and Natural Resources, Mr. William Harrington, to discuss, to help us discuss various issues pertaining to land governance and the environment in general. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, Patrick and uh, Sharon, for inviting me. Thanks to uh, Kamnet TV, which I'd like to refer to as uh, the environmentally friendly uh, television station, not just another channel. <laughs> nice. Thank you. I love the fact that you're, you're mentioning they're not just another channel. It means yeah. a lot to us. Yeah. Yes, uh, interesting. We want to understand, first of all, when we talk about the environment, people take it in abstract into charcoal burning, these other things. But overall, what constitutes the environment, Mr. Harrington? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Patrick, uh, uh, it's true that uh, most people, including government, tend to think that uh, environment is just about forestry, it's just about charcoal burning, etc., which is not. Mm -hmm. It's a very wide si science. It's cross-cutting. But the word environment refers to surroundings and the things found in them, uh, both physical and cultural, mm -hmm. uh, which differ from place to place. In other words, the environment is made up of uh, interacting things and processes. For example, soil, air, water, plants, animals, and human, uh, humans all affect each other in one way or another. Consequently, it is important uh, to look at the environment as a system of working parts. It can be likened to the human body whose various organs perform specific functions or roles. None of the parts uh, work independently of each other. If we damage any of the components, then we damage our own life and that of other life forms. So, in short, 
uh, environment is about our surroundings. As I mentioned, the earth, uh, water, sun, uh, the air, atmosphere, mm -hmm. the plants, uh, fauna and flora, mm -hmm. the wildlife. Um, these are all uh, environmental issues. And I say uh, mm -hmm. environment is cross-cutting. And if you give me a chance, mm -hmm. I can explain uh, how, uh, how uh, environment is a cross-cutting issue. Let's talk about, when you talk about the aspect of cross-cutting, uh, is it a, a one-off ministry issue or it has to be addressed in a holistic approach? Absolutely, it has to be. Uh, and and I, I want to issue, say here that the issue of science on all economic sectors is not just about forests, as I've said before, and, and, pro, and uh, production, which is a, a, a perception right now. Uh, the public perception is that uh, is, we are focusing so much on forestry or deforestation and charcoal burning mm -hmm. and disregarding the other environmental issues. For example, in agriculture, uh, poor farming methods <coughs> such as uh, uh, cultivating near streams, mm -hmm. etc., etc., is an environmental challenge because uh, if soil is loosened around this uh, stream through uh, um, digging of uh, you know, trenches and so on to plant candolo uh, and so on, whatever, uh, it, it results in siltation of the streams and uh, uh, clogging up of the rivers, which means water will not flow. So that is a very serious uh, thing. Large-scale farming also, uh, deforestation not just caused by charcoal burners. Even large-scale farming uh, projects like uh, where you have uh, center pivots. Mm -hmm. Center pivots, you have, to dis <laughs> you have to cut down a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. uh, which is again an environment. So uh, farming can be a contributor, if not dealt with properly, mm -hmm. to uh, deforestation. Uh, for example, also agriculture, if uh, through, for example, um, uh, improper use of pesticides and, uh, and so on, chemicals, uh, if they are used uh, recklessly or carelessly, mm -hmm. uh, these chemicals go into the rivers and streams and destroy the fish life and so on there. So that is again a very serious, uh, uh, what you call, uh, problem. Mining, uh, ground and atmospheric pollution impacts negatively on the environment. Exa I'll give an example of the Kabwe mine. Those days, uh, under the, when, uh, when the Kabwe mine was first established, mm -hmm. environment was not really uh, <laughs> an issue as such. There was no environmental impact assessment. Uh, mines did not have to... Um, uh, undertake EI, what's called EIAs, environmental impact assessments. <coughs> Today, we have a very serious problem in Kabwe. Uh, people are affected by zinc and lead poisoning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the serious, and kids, children are playing on those mounds. If you drive past Kabwe, you see those big children are playing there, and they are being affected. I'll give you an example of uh, Mufira mine. Mufira mine too is, um, nothing grows in Mufira. I think you're aware of it. Yes. Nothing. I, I, when I was Minister of Environment, I actually visited Mufira Mine and I was shocked to find that there's no lawn. People can't grow plants because of the atmospheric pollution and chemical pollution out of those uh, chimneys over the... Now, can you imagine the impact on human life? Mm -hmm. it's, it's terrible. Yes. And so those are the issues we should not, uh, we should not turn, uh, turn our, our eyes against. Local government, indiscriminate li liquid uh, and solid waste disposal. You see fecal matter. The vice president was in, on the vice president, Narumango was in, uh, in Cobbelt a few days. We saw a clip, I don't know whether mm -hmm. it was on cabinet, mm -hmm. where she was highlighting the issue of, you know, um, fecal matter spewing into the, into the water system, underground water system. You'll be shocked to learn that when I was uh, appointed to the Ministry of, uh, of Environment, I was the second minister there after Honorable Kelly Walowita. Um, I, I, I found a report which established that Chawama had 60,000 pit latrines. Mm -hmm. 60,000 and an almost equal number of, of mm -hmm. uh, uh, shallow wells where people are getting water. By law, uh, pit latrines should be at least 10, 15, 20 meters away from a uh, soccer. Mm -hmm. But these are the things in local government which now Chawama, that's only one a high density area. What about uh, Kanyama? What about Chichivolia? What about Garden? These are all areas which our government needs to really critically look at. 
so that uh, these issues are addressed. But that's in the area of local government. In tourism, illegal poaching of wildlife is another critical uh, environmental uh, challenge today. Uh, most of our gay parks, by the way, and, and GMAs have been uh, encroached. The settlements there now. Yes. And uh, by the way, tourism is wildlife based. Without wildlife, if wildlife is going to be destroyed through poaching activities, because people in towns uh, they like uh, cheap meat poached in the game parks, and in a, most of the game parks today are depleted for wildlife. Mumba West GMA, which is uh, on my way to Kwahai, when I go to Kwahai, Kwasinanga, mm -hmm. I was shocked to find that people have gone back uh, to settle in, in, in the GMA. Uh, Honorable Jean Kapata, as Minister of Lands at that time, I salute her for that one, because uh, uh, for me it's not politics here, I look at good and bad. Exactly. She did a great thing to embark on an ambitious program to remove people from the Mumba West GMA. All those people who had encroached illegal settlers were moved out, but they've gone back. And the question I see now, I'm told, I asked one of the game guards in uh, at Narusanga, I said, well, what, what's happening here? Ah, Muzi Vanima politics, Kapena. But the president is aware, he's on his desk, he we're waiting for a, a National Parks and Wildlife Service, he's waiting for a presidential order for him to sign, mm -hmm. that those people should be removed. But he's, he's gathering dust on his desk now. See, that's again politics, uh, my votes. But if we're going to look at votes as a reason what, not to take action, then we're not going to get anywhere in, 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 in resolving this. But that is just tourism. If we, if, if, we, if we destroy our own life and our forest, we can forget about attracting tourists here. Okay, Mr. Harrington, let's, let's weigh in the issue of uh, laws. Zambia is a country that is well known you know, mm. for having these laws in as much as sometimes we fail to implement them. Mm. Do we have sufficient laws that govern land illegalities or the protection of land? Yes, the laws are there, but... Uh, Again, it's a human factor that we are failing. We don't enforce the laws. I think laws are quite adequate uh, mm -hmm. and they are quite punitive. In fact, a, a, a poacher, a poacher, the law is that if a poacher is caught, a, poach, uh, a person is caught poaching yes. in wildlife, uh, wildlife in the game park, whatever it is, uh, his, his vehicle, if he has any, is grabbed by the state. All his guns, all his equipment, even if he's been camping, the whole camp is taken by, seized by the, by, mm -hmm. by the state, his vehicles, his guns, everything. So the law is quite punitive. But I think, uh, again, it's, it's about failing to enforce the law. I mean, you, you can talk about other, we'll talk about the other issues later, if uh, uh, time arises. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are not, uh, government, again, as I say, it's politics, the laws are not being enforced. Uh, they are not being enforced as they should be. We are failing, to, government is, we are failing to enforce the law. Okay. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Land illegalities and um, allocation of land has always continued. We have seen a number of demolitions happening countrywide. I can yeah. simply say countrywide because yeah. it's not only in Lusaka, yeah. it's not only on the Corvo Belt, among other areas that are earmarked for demolition due to encroachment mm. of uh, these uh, um, uh, buildings. What is the problem really? Where is the problem? Corruption in allocation of, uh, of, uh, of land. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is apparent corruption, uh, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, that uh, in certain areas these, uh, these uh, <coughs> things are pregnant with illegalities and procedure procedures in propriety. Mm -hmm. uh, procedures are not being, are not being followed uh, in, in terms of I want to cite, for example, I will cite here, uh, I will cite uh, uh, <coughs> one, procedural impropriety and breaches of the law. Breaches of the law. One, in all developments, okay, mm -hmm. the, uh, constructions and so on, any development mm -hmm. uh, must get approval of Zema. Zema the Zambia Environmental Management Agency must be consulted. That's what the law says. Is it being done in certain cases? No. Government, like what happened in certain forests around Lusaka, did not involve Zema. They were in a hurry to quickly allocate plots 
to party cadres and the senior government officials, uh, disregarding the procedure to be followed. Okay? This was not done and them are not consulted. This water, Zambia, is it Water Management Authority, WAMA, mm -hmm. the Act provides for consultation with the authority. Mm -hmm. The authority, WAMA, must be consulted. Okay? This was not done and, uh, and them and WAMA did not approve. In fact, they wrote a letter to the Chalimbana, Riverhead Waters, whatever, over the Forest 27 issue that mm -hmm. they did not support the housing development there for reasons that the aquifer, the aquifer is, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a water aquifer, and the water table is in, in Forest Reserve is very high. Now, if you only have three, four hundred houses there, each one with a boho, each one with a pitlet, a pit, I mean, a soak away, yes, yes. soak away, and um, whatever you call it. Septic tank. Septic tank. Mm -hmm. It's going to pollute, come on, it's going to pollute underground weather, but these are, these are the things that I'm fighting against on behalf of the people, the 3,000 people of Chalimbana and Chongwe who petitioned that this place be regazetted as a protected forest. Okay, okay? Now, and so before, you, you, before you go so much into that, maybe we can look at a clip that was uh, we carried from the Minister of uh, Lands, uh, Mr. Elijah Mchima, so that we can now delve into the conversation regarding Forest 27. Obviously, you've been one of the people that has been championing the, is it regazetting? De-gazette, re, yeah, re gazetting re gazetting yes. of this. So let's look at this and hear what the minister was saying. Then we can continue yes, yes, over see. forest number 27. Mm. That's okay, Patrick. That's yes, okay. it is. Okay, let's look at that story, Amos, and then we can get back to the conversation. Mm. I was forest 27 de-gazetted. It is served the personal interest. The self-interest was key. And what we have done is we have taken this matter to anti-corruption. Because the president of, of that day had the powers to do the Gazette. And they have been ruling in the High Court and the Supreme Court regarding the same. I cannot go against that. What we need to do is now, we have to take another route. First of all, how was the land alienated? How was it given out? Was there adverts and what have you? All that is being investigated. The, the anti-corruption is looking at that. Secondly, we need to relook at their scientific provisions over the water recharge and that we are already sitting there is a team sitting there is a report we shall inform the public on the geo uh, hydro hydrology setup of that to see how it is affecting the water otherwise then there will be conditions but the remainder of that 600 something hectares that one we are going to protect it it will even be under title and this reminds me to tell you that all government institutions land and what have you which is in the hands of the government we are now going with a program to put them on title so that we protect it it's different from forest 27 with the, the kasompe issue kasompe issue people went there illegally forest 27 people did not go there illegally it was the gazetted and they were given the president by then president lungu had powers he gazetted it there you have it. Uh, that was uh, the Minister of uh, Land, uh, Mr. Elijah Muchima, explaining issues mm -hmm. pertaining to Forest uh, Reserve 27. 27. And uh, a person who is well placed uh, to talk about this issue is Mr. Harrington Definitely. and his uh, colleague, Mr. Robert Chimambo. <laughs> uh, and uh, just to uh, give us an update regarding that, do we have any pending cases uh, uh, that are before court uh, surrounding Forest Reserve number 27, Mr. Harrington? Yeah. <coughs> uh, Sharon has uh, uh, allowed me, before I go to that one, to complete what I was saying uh -huh. yes, on the procedures which were not followed. Mm -hmm. The Director of Forestry, the law provides the, with the, for consultation of the Director of Forestry. Government has to involve the Director of, Directorate of Forestry on, on these matters. This was not done. We are talking about illegalities here. Mm -hmm. The Regional and Town Planning Act provides for authority that authority must be obtained by the Planning Authority, the Council. No authority obtained from Lusaka City Council. The Public Health Act has not been enforced as demanded by law. Okay? The Public Health Act, because that is a public health problem there. Constitution of Zambia, and this is another one before it was uh, the chieftainess in Komesha, Mokamambo III, mm -hmm. which falls under her jurisdiction, Forest Service under her jurisdiction. She was, by law, she should have been consulted. This was not done. Gami should have approached her. 
In fact, we had a very uh, meeting about four or five months ago at the ministry boardroom where she sent her, the princess to come and represent her, the establishment, the sole establishment, as well as her lawyer to come and explain to the government, the Ministry of Lands, that no authority was given by the chieftainess to, for that housing development. Okay? So that is again another uh, presuming pride. The constitution of Zambia guarantees citizens the right to clean and safe water. The provisions of this of the constitution have not been breached. By allowing people to construct in a water source, a water catchment, which not only for Chalimbana and Chongwe, but also for the greater city of Lusaka, because there's an underground water tank there, but it mm -hmm. Okay? Underground, which filters into the into the Lusaka uh, system. Uh, so so, so that, that already has been a breach. So these, these, as far as I'm concerned, they are grounds for a revocation of all title in that forest. These are grounds. The minister is not being sincere. My elder brother, my cousin, my tribal cousin, <laughs> is not being sincere in the way he's dealing with this issue of Forest 27 and other things. By the way, the issue talking about in court is not, is not accurate, is not truthful. What is maybe in court is the ZAF, Kingsland. That one, that's, that's a, a section is, be, is in court, yes, or has been in court or still in court. I do not know the status of that matter. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the uh, Kingsland. I think you might have been there. Yes, yes, uh -huh. I remember. Yeah. The issue we're talking about here, the catchment is the, the area the section of forest which has been degazetted by degazetted to allow for the housing development by the former president Edgar Chagualungu for his party cadres and his uh, civil servants. It's an open secret. The list are there. Chief Justice Irene Mambilima. Is it Mambilima? Late. Mm -hmm, they yes. are so rest in peace. The, the speaker, Mr. Matibini. I, 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 I call a spade a spade here. Mm -hmm. These are facts. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the Inonge winner, the former vice president, was located land there. Mm -hmm. So, so you see, see, among senior government officials, yes, former. and the party mm -hmm. cadres. I uh, look at the list, you will see. Okay, there, uh, there are um, accusations that some ministers in the UPND government, I'm not aware, they have disputed. I did my research, they are also part of that. Yeah, they say, they but, also benefited. Yeah, but they say that they haven't, according to what I hear. Since we don't have proof, then yeah, we just I, take I it as have. speculation. Yes, exactly. But those others who have seen, none of them have disputed. They're all quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that, that is uh, uh, your question again just was, what was it? You... So we were trying to find out uh, now. Uh, you, you responded to Patrick to it, uh, the, to the pending case yeah, uh, no. on, uh, on Forest yeah, Reserve. The, the issue, yeah, now, that's an important one. Mm -hmm. that's so it. now that we have illegalities uh, on uh, Forest Reserve number 27, mm -hmm. what sort of action are you taking under this administration, which assured you as activists that they were going to address the issues pertaining to Forest Reserve number 27? What are you going to do about it, Mr. Harrington? You see, uh, let me just... Uh, before I answer that question, mm -hmm. I want to, to refer here to an article which came up uh, in the Diggers newspaper, uh, Thursday, September 1, 2022, uh, where the Minister of Land, the title of the story is that I have been first, I, I, I'd, I'd have been first to order demolition of Forest 27 houses if there were no legal complications, Minister. This is what um, Elijah, my elder brother, exactly said. Exactly what that clip was yes, saying. Yes. To say, he says, mm -hmm. Now, Lenz and the Minister says if there were uh, illegalities surrounding Forest 27, he would have been the first to order demolition. This is what he was referring to. Eh? Mm -hmm. In an interview, Chusim Chima said government did not want to be served with injunctions or need to compensate people if it, were, if it, if it went ahead with demolition structures without concluding. One, the issue of uh, compensation does not arise. Mm -hmm. Where illegality is established, which he should know, he's aware himself that there were illegalities. That has been established. That procedure was not uh, was not thing. The whole procedure was pregnant with illegalities. So that should have been a basis. And where where there is uh, this is established, the issue of compensation does not arise. So let's not be misled. Mm -hmm. I know even my brother Gary Combo said it some some time ago. It, I think it was a Daily Nation where he said, "No, we are worried about the." issue of compensation. Mm -hmm. You don't compensate somebody for illegality. Where illegality is, there's no compensation. Okay? There's no compensation. But, of course, the state can use its discretion on compassionate grounds, either compensate them financially or give 
lend anywhere else to those people who are affected by the demolition. Mm -hmm. It can provide land somewhere else. But uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you a reaction from the people to this statement. Right on this on the on the same page on the same newspaper Friday. Mm -hmm. These people are saying this. Editors note, and editors note, there are always legal implications when it favors the elite. Okay? Yes. When it favors the elite, no, there are legal complications. We don't know because those are high cost housing, government is scared. But even those poor people, the ordinary Zambians who have spent their meager resources to build houses, uh, why is there no link? They'll move, and, they'll move in, they'll move in and, and demolish. What happened in Kasompe? Mm -hmm. uh, the bulldozers went in. Now, somebody wrote to say, there are always legal complications when it favors the elite. This is Sinkala Derek. Then the other one wrote, meanwhile, there are no legal Im implications for the poor. Bias Sichamba. Sort out those legal complications and demolish the structures. The president should just regazette the forest and halt all ongoing construction. On, the, on this one, Lens Minister is just giving excuses. Better he just keeps quiet. Procter R. Siwale. With all due respect, the minister. It's not me, it's him. It's the Zambians. The ordinary people are writing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is coming from the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are busy demolishing houses for poor Zambians, not rich Zambians. All of us, we, should, we shall uh, attend the conference of God's Judgment Day, Evangelist <laughs> Mumba. On that one, New Dawn government has scored zero. People never expected goalpost change. We hope the same mathematics applied uh, to. Kasupe will apply, Kasupe, maybe meant Kasompe. Kasompe. Mm -hmm. Will apply even at Forest 27. Austin, yeah, yeah I always keep these things for my, <laughs> I know, I always keep these uh, issues, mm -hmm. I follow on uh, uh, Minister, then somebody wrote, Minister, Minister, this Forest 27 was illegally degazetted by the former president or against the advice of Zema. Okay? And international world heritage. Please contact the Zambian conservationist, Honorable Williams, uh, Williams, William Harrington, and Mr. Chivamba. Jimmy meant Chim Chimambo. Mm -hmm. Okay. As they had challenged the previous government in the courts of law. Hence, they are all necessary documents concerning the Forest 27, unlike the route Honorable Gary Combo has taken to consult others. When were our own patriots who even helped? without spending colossal sums of money. And I said it myself, I said, I asked, I asked, I questioned the logic of engaging institutions like uh, Wildlife Fund for Nature, it's called WWF. Mm -hmm. The minister uh, recently stated that he was working closely with, uh, first initially, he went there with the Honorable Gary Combo, it was on TV, and he ordered the, the halting of all structures in Forest 27. Okay, we saw it, oh, oh well, let's see, what happened? People continued constructing roads named even after Edgar Chagualungu there, and I don't know whether the council have approved those roads and so on, so on, so on. I don't know whether Zesco now is also putting power there. Mm -hmm. yeah. If Zesco is putting power, that means the government has allowed, uh, is, is made, is, is, is legalized. You see, again, <laughs> that's right. But um, I, I want to repeat that, you know, no, this, uh, this, you see, this double standards in application of the law worries me. You know, we should not apply double standards. Another thing, have, an, another uh, thing is that Mr. Uh, Harrington, just just hold your thought. You have a book there that is just next to yeah, you, yeah. and it's supposed to be a report. Yeah, yeah. And it contains mm -hmm. some documents Very that important. you you sent to yeah. the Ministry of yeah. uh, Lands. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yes, I will. And another thing, if I do that one, very briefly, there's one other procedure that's not followed in allocation of of those plots. Okay, there was no. Uh, uh, public notice? No, no, no public notice. He mentioned that there was no, there was no, there was no. Listen, there was no advertising. This is a, it should have been a public advert in the yes. newspapers mm -hmm. to invite interested Zambian citizens to apply for plots there. This was not done. Why? It was a secretive operation mm -hmm. by the former government. Some, some, some people were just sent title deeds. I don't want to mention names. They were just given titles. Manitou Maba, a minister. But you pass a title deed. Ah, it's not title deed. Yeah, yeah, forest to save it. Sure, what? Yeah, but I never applied. Yeah, it's okay. You see, chance you have to. Otherwise, soon as I pay the, soon as I pay the plot, this is our chance. We're in government now, just to take. You see, there, there also should have been application for, under the Urban and Regional Planning Act, Section 
number three, section 52, subsection two of 2015 of the laws of Zambia, you give a public notice for land use change. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a forest reserve. Yes. Okay, it has always been a forest reserve since the colonial times. Those Wazungu were not stupid in the colonial administration to dig, to gazette that place as a protected forest pre pre independence time. Okay. They recognize the importance of that forest reserve. But we Zambians, we are more clever than them. We have turned that one into a residential housing. But we are very clever. So when cholera starts, when, uh, when um, dysentery starts, when typhoid starts and diarrhea there, listen, even from the Zaf thing, downstream there, when the rains come, they, those, that stream has been clogged with used condoms. From the Zaf, used condoms, we have it on camera. Ask Mr. Chimambo. Used condoms found in the stream. Now what about the household chemicals? I'm talking about Hapik. All these poisonous, hazardous chemicals. It's affecting the water. President Akainde Chilema went there some time ago before the elections. He toured when we first brought up this thing. And he was shown fish which had died because of the chemical. You know, that is, you see, yes. Mr. Muchima, Mr. Muchima is right. The president under the constitution has powers to gazette, to, to de-gazette or to re-gazette. These are presidential powers under the constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay? But in the case of Forest 27, you should not justify that I had this minister, um, MP for in the leader of the house in parliament, Mr. Mutubile. Mutubile recently tried to justify and said, no, the president uh, de-gazetted it legally. Yes, he might have used, used his constitutional powers to, but it's a moral issue here. You can't, you can't justify the construction of uh, houses there on the fact that uh, the president uh, uh, degazetted legally. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not, you see, we, let's think about present generation, let's think about future generations who will be impacted negatively, their lives and health, and that's, that's my interest to me. I'm not, I got no plot there, I never applied, I'm not bitter about anything, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about the lives of the people. Can we as government be responsible? Okay. Now, the minister also talked about uh, saying mm -hmm. that, uh, he, listen, first, some months ago, the minister talked about, uh, mm -hmm. he, he, he said he was appointing a committee eh, to yes. investigate the illegalities involved in the location of plots. That's a very good internal thing for the ministry. Very good. Let him check the corruption there and give his report to the Anti-Corruption Commission. I salute him for that. No problem. My worry is that it is, our a bone of contention us is degazetting. The issue of degazetting to pave way, selfishly, mm -hmm. to people, party cadres, to build houses. That is our bone. Mm -hmm. That is our issue. Then recently, uh, I heard the minister Muchima saying that he has appointed uh, 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 working with WWF to, to come up with a study or to fund a study on the forest and the impact of the forest, I mean, on the, of the housing development on the forest and the water source. <laughs> you know, I laughed at this because one, we have Zema. Zambia, man, you could work with government institutions created by Act of Parliament, WOMA. Mm -hmm. Zema, all these other institutions without mm -hmm. engaging uh, WWF. And by the way, environmental issues, that's why I said I have a difficulty with understanding the portfolio functions of our, of our new Don government. You have a Minister of Environment who doesn't say anything about Zema, he doesn't say anything about uh, uh, EIAs and so on. He should be the person to say, no, I'm ordering Zema to conduct it. He, Minister of Lands, what's his name? Minister of... Collins is over. Collins is over. I like the young man. Mm -hmm. Very good. So when you come to charcoal burning and so on, it's very good. But you should be the one mm -hmm. to talk about uh, engaging Zema, ordering Zema. You see? Now the minister said this. Now here's the report. Can it come? Mm -hmm. come to the camera. No, so, you can. No, just, just, mm -hmm. just put it there. Aha, here you yes. are. This is the report which I gave I presented the minister when he started talking about engaging a, 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 a committee to investigate uh, 
the legalities or illegalities of the Forest 27. Mm -hmm. Just a brief, it, brief, it, it, uh, some brief uh, issues uh, on yeah, this no, report. Yeah, the brief issue is mm -hmm. the, 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 the recommendation, the finding mm -hmm. of this report, <laughs> which I presented now, I don't know where is the, where is the letter, it doesn't matter. It was in March, March this year. I put it under cover of my letter, this report here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Open letter to Mr. Mchima, the Lusaka East Local Policy Number 27. I presented together with this report. Mm -hmm. another, another report. This, re this report is also very authoritative because it involved the Zambian government mm -hmm. under the Ministry of Water De Energy and Water Development at that time. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was called Water Development, uh, Water Energy and Water Development, including uh, the German government. There was a BR, DGR is a, Zam is a government, is a German government uh, consultancy. Which in, in, it is very authoritative. You think what? Yeah. And it said that area is vulnerable to pollution. Forest is there, number seven. Now we're talking about the whole, including the South Kingsland. Okay? As a forest reserve. Because the question is why is it a forest reserve? Why it's a protected forest? Which is vulnerable to contamination, water contamination, and water pollution. And hence, they recommended that there should be no construction there. Why has Mr. Muchima ignored? He didn't even have the courtesy of favoring me with a report, with the with acknowledgement of this. I would have been very happy for him to say, thank you, my brother. We have seen your report. We are studying it. But no, he prefers to engage what I believe is just time-consuming, time-wasting. He's buying time. What's going to happen is, what he's trying to do with the minister is to close the stable doors. Muziwa. Mm -hmm. You are stopping them from running away. Mm -hmm. uh, That's when you close the gate. Mm -hmm. huh? as, the, as the saying goes, it's closing stable doors when the horses have run away. Because people are busy there constructing. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Government needs to be decisive on this matter. We need decisive affirmative action on this one. And I'm sad that my, uh, Mr. Mchima has, you see, the president needs to be assisted by his ministers. Mm -hmm. Because what he needed to do, take this report to cabinet. My friends in cabinet, mm -hmm. this is the report I received on this thing. This could be a basis for the government to help the president Hakaidi H. Lema to make a decision. And that's why I'm saying that it's timely, this program, I'm happy that ahead of the official opening of parliament on Friday, the president should consider making a position statement on the issue of deforestation in this country, on encroachment in game parks, which is depleting wildlife through poaching, and also on illegal settlement. That is an illegal settlement, as far as I'm concerned, as an environment. We look at that as an illegal citizen. For all intents and purposes, for reserve is, Mr. Minister, it's an illegal settlement. Deal with it as such. It's an illegal settlement, and now we petition, not... Uh, we are not, I'm not appealing, mm -hmm. I'm not appealing, okay? I'm not You're appealing, petitioning. I'm petitioning the president to come out clean on this matter and use the occasion of the official opening of parliament on Friday to deal with this matter. We should put an end to the procrastination that's coming out of the ministry, of the office of the minister of lands, talking about committees and his faulting, those are totally unnecessary. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, even my grandson knows that to put, to put a, a housing uh, scheme, a project, development on a water aquifer is disaster. It spells disaster. Okay? So, look, uh, I believe uh, this mm -hmm. new, this area, there's no more, there's no more water. You see, that area there, in Sakara. Yes, the famous... Uh, Charara, is it Charara? Charara. Mm -hmm. uh, water problems already. Okay? Before you used to get water at 20, 30 feet. Today you have to go, Deeper. if you are lucky, it's going to happen in Forest 77. In other words, they will not find water there. It's already gone. And Lusaka also will be denied of water source. There will be shortage of water in Lusaka. And then there will be cholera and thing. The government, the first one, they will be announcing every day, like what the former minister used to announce, every day figures of how many people have died from dysentery and cholera. It will be a daily thing. And yet, there's a, there, why not deal with the problem? Just make an announcement as if we are very proud that so many people have been affected by cholera and dysentery and typhoid to be naked, to get donor support. I think it's very unfair. We're not being fair 
Mr. Harrington, with with all this advocacy, with all this talk uh, regarding Forest 27, with all these documents, all the stories written by journalists, interviews, do you think there's going to be any change? Is there a political will insofar as this matter is concerned, at, at least according to your yeah, observation? Yeah, I, I've all looked at uh, asking, he asked me very, very well, so what is next, what are we doing now? Mm -hmm. Because we have uh, hitting a uh, uh, <laughs> hard war as environmentalists on this issue of forest to see, it seems uh, we are hitting a pass But you know, mm -hmm. we have played our part, there's nothing more. We are not, we can only influence policy. Mm -hmm. We cannot uh, enforce. Enfo we, we cannot enforce, we cannot, um, uh, yeah, we cannot enforce, and, uh, but we can influence policy. Mm -hmm. We do not make decisions. And that's why we have gone now to parliament. Uh, we, under the, under the, I think in this game picked up. Yes. Okay. It's there. This document, this mm -hmm. document, is uh, is called National Zambia of Zambia Standing Orders Now Standing Orders 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this orders uh, under one two three. It says uh, we have written the minutes. If I can just just go through it quickly, mm -hmm. what we, what we have actually asked the the, the Madam Speaker. Uh, by the way, the Parliament because it's. Uh, because it's a constitutional matter, that's why we're taking it there. <laughs> because Gary, Honorable Gary Combo on the floor of the House uh, said, I was hoping that you'd uh, show the clip there. He said, as soon as we come into government, we are going to demolish. I think you're aware of that. Yes, 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 yes. We, are, we yes. have done several things. That's reports. why we're taking back to Parliament now to see mm -hmm. if he can, uh, what he is going to say about what he said. Mm -hmm. Whether now new issues are going to come up about, you know. Uh, but we wrote, uh, I'm, I'm, in this petition, I'm the principal petitioner coming from the Mongolia area in Sananga, Western Province, and Robert Chimambo as the secretary of the Chalimbana River Waters Conservation Trust. Here, where is the secretary? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's a very short thing. I'll just go through if you allow me very quickly. Uh, we respectfully request that the government be ordered to immediately regazette a portion of over 1,100 acres. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about ZAF. Mm -hmm. This is the area where the, which... Uh, Forest Reserve. Yeah, yes. which uh, the contentious one, uh, the controversial degazette by a former uh, President Lungu of the Lusaki Forest Reserve number 7, which is referred to as Forest Reserve, so that it reverts to its original protection status in the public and national interest. Okay, so Parliament has a role to play this whole thing here. Because where laws were made in that house. Mm -hmm. the laws are made, this is legislature. Okay? And I said, we said to her that the above mentioned forest mess was regazetted by 6th Republican President Edgar Chagolungu just prior to the August 12, 2021 general elections to pave way for an extensive residential and housing and other housing development for a targeted group of citizens. We didn't want to go into names here, it was not necessary, but we know, everybody knows. That action by President Lungu was in total disregard of the fact that Forest Number 27 has since pre-colonial times been and continues to be a critical and sensitive and strategic ecological zone. It is a water catchment for the local Chongo and Chalimbana people as well as an aquifer for the residents of the Great city of, as I already mentioned. Okay? The housing development will result in a medium to long-term contamination of the surface and underground water to the detriment of the people who depend on it for livelihood and well-being. Construction of hundreds of soccer ways for disposal of fecal matter as well as poisonous and hazardous household chemicals are a danger to the health of citizens uh, from water life, waterborne life-threatening diseases such as cholera, dysentery, diarrhea, and typhoid. It is for this reason that the Zambia Environment Management Agency, ZEMA, and the Water Resource Management Agency, Authority, WOMA, both created by acts of parliament, did not support or do not support the housing development. Mention the word created by parliament. That's why I'm taking this matter to parliament. We want parliament to make sure that these, these institutions which were created by parliament are effective and proactive in their work and not be seen to be, you know, dealing with matters uh, with favor and fear and favor. <laughs> now, this is very important. Why are we taking to parliament also? The Constitution of Zambia, Amendment Number 2 of 2016, that we say to the Madam Speaker that this petition is in line with the provisions of the Constitution of Zambia, which under Bill of Rights, 
but five social economic rights at section 52 subsection or is it article you say article 52 sub article 1 states that quote a person has a right to clean and safe water end quote this basic human right enshrined in the supreme law of the land should not be denied to the people that's what we've told us i'm asking the house to take we are asking the house to take action on the subject matter in the public and national interest so we are waiting and uh, we want to wait and see uh, how madam speaker we are, we are praying that she will look at our petition <laughs> favorably uh, uh, so that we see how parliament deals with it it will be an interesting debate, I think, uh, to see whether who is going to go against the, the petition and allow that, uh, that thing. Are they siding with the people or are they siding with the few people or are they siding with the masses? Uh, okay. so we want to see. Here for us, we are, so we are siding with the masses. Patrick, as we wind up. Yeah, so Mr. Mr. Harrington, first of all, we just, um, as we come towards uh, the end of our, our discussion, I also want to just uh, get uh, your perspective regarding the, the, the long-term consequences of us not following procedure in terms of as we undertake uh, housing development and other aspects, for instance, building in watershed areas, mm -hmm. uh, recharge zone, buffer zones. What are the long-term long -term consequences uh, that Zambia will grapple with, especially when dealing with? I think, uh, to put it succinctly, the consequences will be too costly to contemplate. Okay? Mm -hmm. It will affect our environment so badly that it will be a point where it will be very hard to, to reverse to reverse those uh, procedural proprieties, the illegalities uh, pertaining to land issues. And that's why you find demolitions taking place every other day. We see on uh, Cabinet TV here, uh, this stone soil is being demolished, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, so this place is being demolished. Constructions so, on constructions, illegal areas. Yeah. yeah. So the consequences on our health, if we do not pay attention to, to the, the long-term consequences to our health and the, the economy, socio-economic development, socio-economic, will be too costly to contemplate. And we need to address this thing decisively and proactively. Um, and that's why I, I am petitioning the Republican President, Mr. Akani, in my closing remarks, mm -hmm. uh, to take advantage of the occasion of the official opening of Parliament on Friday, September 22, to clearly and decisively state the position of our new dawn government. I'm saying our government. Mm -hmm. okay? I'm not saying his government. It's our government. We put it there. It's our government. Uh, on critical matters of concern environment, on, uh, concern in, on environment protection and natural resources conservation of Zambia. By the way, uh, Zambia, soon after uh, the MMD government came to government, not into power. I don't like using the word power because the word is abused by certain people when they get into office. It's not about power here. It's not about how strong you are and whether you are a small bulldozer or a big bulldozer. No. I say when, you, when, 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 uh, when we came into government in 1991, he sent a high-power delegation led by the first minister of environment, Honorable Kelly Walwita, to attend the Rio Earth Summit. You've heard of it? Uh, Google it. The Rio Summit Agenda 21, when Zambia committed itself to Agenda 21 on environmental protection, uh, on uh, sustainable management, utilization uh, of our natural resources for the present and future generations. And that's what President Shuva taught me very much on the need to protect the interests of the future. But as I said, let me just go back to as concerned citizens, environmentalists, we expect President Hakainde to deal with the controversial degradation of the Rusaka East Local Forest Reserve Number 27 by his predecessor, President Edgar Chagolungu, uh, an, an action which was not in the public and national interest, but in the interest of a few selected and targeted citizens, including high-ranking government officials with uh, ser uh, uh, civil servants and party officials and cadres. I always refer sometimes to, uh, I always refer to the Forest 27 degradation as, mm -hmm. as one, of the, one of the biggest environmental disasters since independence, apart from uh, even pre-colonial, mm -hmm. the Mopira, that's an environmental disaster, as mm -hmm. well as the, the subway mine, that's another. This forest reserve, as well as the gazetting of other, because it's been rampant. Yes. Uh, since independence, there's been, the rate has, been, has not been superseded. The rate of deforestation of sensitive 
uh, areas for reserve. Mm -hmm. as, as this, during the era of the Patriot of Patriotic Fund government analyst of, uh, of uh, President Edgar Chagwa Lungu, it's been so much, but again, it's politics to appease party cutters because of the demand for people they want land. Yes, they should land. There's no shortage of land in, in Zambia. But really, to dig as a forest, we talk about global warming here. Where's the morality? Where's the seriousness of, of the PF government to, to uh, dig as a forest, to clear trees to, for housing, and those trees are used for charcoal, charcoal production? I think it's the uh, most irresponsible action of the patriotic front government under the leadership of Edith Chagalungu. So, there is need for President uh, uh, Kainte to deal with the parties. 12 August 2021 campaign promise made on the floor of the House by a senior party official who is now in government, uh, who is now in government. There is need to put an end uh, to the continuous procrastination by his Minister of Lands and Exercises over the matter uh, since August 21. Because what we have seen from the Office of the Minister I've seen before is procrastinating, you know? Procrastinating meaning failing, refusing, or just ignoring to do what is legally, supposed to be done. legally correct, follow the law. That's all. That's all he needs to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I, I want also, secondly, to appeal to Madam Speaker, uh, Madam Nelly Muti to place the petition presented to her office on the, by, on, by Robert Chimambo my, and myself, uh, and Chimambo representing the affected, uh, on behalf of the affected people of Chongo and Chanibana community, the parliament inquires into the matter of persons whose welfare and lives are now under real threat of exposure to epidemics. I've highlighted those epidemics before, I don't need to me to highlight or explain what the things can, can result from contamination of water source by fecal matter and household uh, chemicals. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's a crisis on our hands. Uh, when government, I want to petition uh, the government and the president, Akainde Chilema, to deal decisively with this forest reserve number 27 uh -huh. uh, to avert a looming health crisis in this country. If if nothing is done about Forest 27. Whether it's demolition, I'm, I've got nothing and nothing against anybody who has developed there personally. For me, it's the issue I'm dealing with. And, okay. and that's what the government needs to, to do. All right, Patrick. There you have it. Uh, our dear viewers, uh, we have come to the end of our program. We could not accommodate our cause. I wanted to give our guests enough time to explain issues uh, pertaining to Forest Reserve number 27 and various land and uh, environmental issues uh, that matter in this country. We are going to continuously discuss uh, these issues pertaining to land and the environment. As we already know, we are defined by the environment in which we live in. So environment, uh, we take this issue with uh, the importance that it, it deserves and we will continue to discuss uh, various issues pertaining to land governance and the environment. And um, Mr. Harrington would like to thank you for finding time to be with, with us uh, in the studio. Yes, I, I want to thank the viewers who care to listen in. I, 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 I'm, I would be very happy to appear on one of your evening programs because uh, a lot of people phoned in and said, but why mm -hmm. this time in the morning? People are going to work, driving the children to think. Mm -hmm. I'll be willing to appear on your evening program this year. You know, we need to do justice. You, know, you cannot mm -hmm. do justice to this issue on environment in one hour's time. No. You cannot. It's a wide subject and there are a lot of things. But uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And I also want to thank uh, Mr. Patrick Musole of the uh, Zambia Land Alliance to, for coming through to sponsor me to appear on this program. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate uh, the kind gesture by the Zambia Land Alliance. I think we are partners in development. We are partners in land issues. We are partners in uh, issues of the environment. We shall work closely with the Zambia Land Alliance to ensure that uh, uh, sanity is brought to land issues and environmental issues in this country. All right. Thank you so much for watching Cabinet Breakfast. Join us again tomorrow from 7 to 9. Good morning.